everyone and uh, welcome to the uh, final installment of my uh, Falklands War 40th anniversary uh, tribute build uh, using uh, AFV Club's 135th scale Scorpion. As you can see from the short video the model is now complete and in this video I'll show you how I, used, how I was able to create this look using oils. So first of all uh, looking at the bottom of the uh, vehicle what the aim was was to produce um, a blend all the way up to the turret um, and on the lower hull what I did was to use um, light on dark and for the contrast on the turret I did dark on light um, and as you can see it's come out really well and there's a nice progressive amount of uh, dirt and mud all the way up to the top of the turret where it is a lot cleaner. Now on the uh, turret itself, on the actual stowage bin, I've done no weathering at all because I'll show you my techniques in this video. And as you can see, there is a sharp difference between the two. But uh, while we're here, we'll have a look around the turret itself uh, to again, uh, to do that nice uh, join from the lower hull up to the turret. We added some uh, dust uh, along the bottom of the turret itself. And then we did some weathering on the kit bags um, and the fire extinguisher there as well as the uh, spare track links and then coming around to the front uh, the uh, cover for the barrel came out particularly well uh, so did the uh, grenade launchers as well and I was really pleased with how the barrel and the whole front of the uh, turret um, turned out and on this side again we, we did some uh, pigment work um, and also some more work on the kit bags as you can see on the very top here, there's uh, precious little dirt and mud because obviously this is where it all happens with the crew um, and obviously they'll keep that clean uh, through constant use. So onto the lower hull itself, um, as you can see the front end's been weathered, uh, the back end hasn't and again on this video I'll show you my techniques on how I did that. But starting around the back, uh, we put some little uh, rust detail uh, where the lights had been taken off and also some uh, smoke detailing on the uh, exhaust there. And also we have uh, the stowage bins on the side and the um, bed rolls which came out particularly well and some metallic work on the uh, tools and also on the wood handle of the pickaxe. And then coming around to the front, we have the um, rusted effects on the uh, spare sprocket. And this particular corner came out well with the um, washing of, of the dirt and mud over the bow of the uh, scorpion itself. And there we have a lot of splatter marks all used with uh, oils and pigments alike. Again, we'll look at these techniques in a moment. As far as the handles on the tools go, I decided to go for the uh, light handle uh, look. And then that was uh, dirtied up um, and grain added using the um, oils and similarly uh, work was done on the um, cover for the exhaust and again around the side on the uh, towing eye for the rope as well. I was particularly pleased with the uh, rear stowage bin, uh, very pleased with how the uh, canvas uh, cover came out. And that uh, detailing of the um, mud and splatter marks was continued underneath at the rear as well. So all in all, uh, very pleased with how, how it went. And uh, now I'd like to take this opportunity to show you some of the uh, techniques that I used on the um, oil paint rendering. So first of all, um, moisten the uh, brush up with some thinner and then gently go around uh, the area in which you want to do your oil work taking off all of the um, bits of hair and dust that may have gathered while it was on the bench don't go overboard with this you do not want to saturate the surface you just want to give it a nice clean now as I said to you before uh, on the turret I went from dark to light so what we're going to do now is to uh, have a look at some of the uh, dark oils on the palette
Now, as far as the dark oils go, using uh, Winds and Newton, uh, we had some War Umber, some Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Umber, some Warm Sepia, and some Sepia. There's also the greens and the light browns and the dust colours on there, which I'll go into uh, later on. So once the um, oils have been on the palette for a while, allowing the linseed oil to drain out, uh, they're now in a position to be able to be used. Then we just mix some of the colours together um, until we're able to um, come up with a uh, shade of dark that we're happy with. Don't go overboard with the thinner. Uh, you do not want to saturate the model. And again, with the brush, as you can see, I'm cleaning that off as I go and taking as much of the excess um, thin off as well. A couple of brushes that I use, uh, round number twos, one for uh, blending, uh, another one for application. And for the lighter colors, I'll uh, repeat the process with, with uh, newer brushes. So we'll apply some of the uh, oil that I've mixed up. Um, what we're trying to do here is to add a uh, shadow. So this will go uh, on the joins and in the crevices. I will point out to you at this uh, stage that uh, this video is very much a warts and all video. You will see everything from all my mistakes to you know problems with the camera etc etc so I just basically let the camera run uh, while I was doing all of this work so uh, it's a bit of fun as well as uh, hopefully uh, being able to provide you some help with uh, how to apply the oils so as you can see I'm getting it deep down into the crevices then and blending it out with a blending brush what you mustn't do is to sort of leave tide marks uh, or any visible sort of paint marks so make sure that you, your blending is done correctly. You can uh, stipple effect, do some brush strokes down if you want to create some uh, streaks as well. And then again, uh, we will repeat the process now around on the back of the stowage bin as well. There will be quite a few moments of silence in this video because uh, I'll only end up just continually repeating myself because the, the processes are very much the same. But uh, like I say, just try and uh, use the darker colors to accentuate the, the shadows um, and the crevices and the recesses on the build. One handy tip, uh, once you have done your pallets of oils, if you leave it in the uh, fridge when you're not using it it will um, lengthen the uh, the lifetime of the oils so you don't have to keep redoing a palette each time you come to the to the bench you may also be able to see here the different colors of the uh, green that which we did uh, initially again adding that uh, contrast because this is all about building up layers um, so from the greens to the darks to the dusts and um, to the final uh, greens again it's all about building up layers sort of creating that, that sort of timeline um, of dirt and uh, wear and tear on the uh, tank over the over the months and years that it's been in active service Always remember that you don't want to be putting too much oil on. Uh, so if you get if if you feel that there's too much on there, just take it off, wipe it on the towel um, or on your on your gloves, um, and just keep the um, keep the brushes uh, the blending brushes clean um, of any excess oil. See there we go. I put too much on there, so I'm just taking it off now and wiping it on the towel and then going back in and blending it out that's of course if the camera was working properly I'm a little bit low there so apologies for that a 
like I said at the beginning, this is the fun and games of just letting the uh, camera roll. Sometimes <laughs> you'll see me in action, sometimes uh, you won't. But there we go. Back up on the top areas now. Now once the, the uh, dark uh, oils have been done, uh, it's up to you, Some, you know, if, if you want to crack on, you're in the mood, get your hair dryer on there and dry out the oil and then you can go ahead and start putting the, the light colours on. Um, or if you have a busy life like myself, you, you, you'll just leave this now, go off to work and come back to it tomorrow, uh, which will obviously be plenty of time for, for the oils to dry out. Because as I said to you before, you're using very little thinner, very little oil, so it does dry out quickly. And there we have it, that's the uh, dark coat being applied. Now we'll just finish off now with the uh, last panel. Now in between uh, doing the dark and the light we'll add some uh, dark splatter marks. Um, try it out on, on the um, towel before uh, to make sure the consistency um, and the spread you're happy with. Here I want to do some uh, sharp um, dots of uh, dirt on the top and on the sides. Try not to overdo this but if you do it's oils, it very easy comes off and you can just blend it out the uh, particular dots of ore that you're not happy with. But I'm pretty pleased with that, that's come out well. And again, we'll let that dry before we come in and do another layer. So with the dark uh, colors all done and now dry, uh, we'll start the process again. Now this had been uh, sat around for about a week, two weeks while I was doing other things. Um, so in this particular instance, I'm just going back over, just giving it a quick clean. If however, this is straight after you've hair dried or you know the following day, no need to, to, to do this. And in fact, you may start taking off some of the oil. So because it's been sat around for a couple of weeks, nice and dry, there's no harm in doing this. So now that it's prepared, uh, we got a mixture of all the different uh, dust colors. Uh, we've got a bit of light mud in there as well and it's very much a similar process to the um, dark colors where we apply and then blend in but obviously with the dust that's going to accumulate along the bottoms um, and along the uh, top of the uh, the bin and again this will give you an opportunity to, to do a few little streaks as well But now what you'll find is you're starting to benefit from the uh, process of uh, adding layers because this is now pretty much the fourth, fourth layer, fifth layer and starting to get some depth um, on the model now. There we go, some downward streaks. And as you can see, they are quickly offloaded uh, some of the excess oil. It's very important, as I've said uh, in this process, to keep the amount of oil and thinner on the model down to a minimum. And that way you won't uh, mix, mix what you're doing with, with the layers that were laid down already. Thank you. 
wants just to highlight that top edge. Um, the fo the uh, reference photos did show that the uh, 23A sign was pretty much um, covered. I personally didn't want to really go down that road because I, I did want it to be clearly seen, but um, I, I've muddied it out um, and dusted it out, so um, at least it, it's blended in well with the actual stowage bin itself. So with the sides done, it was uh, time now just to do a few patches of dust on the top of the bin as well. Again, just added a little bit too much so it's very, very easy just to offload on, onto your hand or onto the paper towel and again very important to blend blend out each layer of color So there we have it, that's the uh, the lighter layer done now. And what I'm actually doing now is putting an even lighter layer of um, oils on and just doing a couple of little patches just to again bro bro break up the uh, contrasting colors. Because um, if you remember the, the uh, dust initial dust color was a mixture of two or three um, colors and now what I've done is, is made up a mixture of uh, just a couple of really light dust tones and just doing a couple of patches on there again just to add interest and realism So when you're pleased with um, that particular stage, what you now need to do is to add a little bit of a uh, wash. Uh, this is um, sepia, um, Absolute 501. And then sort of just paint it into uh, all the uh, recesses around the nuts and the bolts. Um, a bit like doing a pin wash really. Uh, but you're actually trying to paint on the effect itself and you will may well have noticed that I've gone down to a smaller brush now as I want to try and be somewhat more precise but again we do not want to flood the surface so so don't make it the consistency of a wash um, you're looking more like uh, an ink uh, to be truthful And we'll put some around the handles as well. And again around the rivets and, and the bolt heads. A 
now what you've probably already uh, noticed is that I'm doing an area of the vehicle at a time you, you don't do this process all over the the vehicle you just pick, pick a panel in this case pick a storage bin just a small area of the um, uh, vehicle um, that you're applying your oils to and, and fully do all of the oil work once you've finished then move on to the next panel and do it the same otherwise you're going to end up with no end of problems with oils drying out and having to leave it for a couple of days because you've shot off and done something else you know so keep it to small manageable areas I mean altogether this storage bin probably took me about three quarters of an hour or so to do um, and I don't know about you but I, I usually allocate a, a, an hour a, a day if possible uh, to, to the bench so that's what I always try, try to aim to do is, is, is an hour's worth of uh, bench time of course it doesn't always help when people start knocking on the door and want to pop in for a cup of tea but uh, the good thing about oils is that they, that they can be um, uh, adjusted um, once you've put them on maybe a day or so later So very carefully going around the um, stowage bin locks. If you remember, that was the uh, PE set that we used from Eduard. And we're just getting into the uh, the crevices there. And again, we'll blend it out onto the areas that we've already done. So very pleased with that. Now you'll notice I'm using a different blending brush here because what I want to do is just try and create a, a stippling effect. Now as you can see I'm taking this off quite a lot as in comparison when I last did it because the uh, oils now are still a little bit wet. Probably should have left it a bit longer but obviously uh, with, with the video I wanted to get it done. But it's no biggie because what we're trying to do is just to blend it into the areas again adds another layer and it also allows the um, the detailing to stand out as you can see the blending brush is quite an old one which is fine um, it just creates a, a better grainy look uh, when you're doing the blending with it as you can see I'm running my finger over the higher ridges and the higher parts of the nuts and the rivets just to clean those off and if you have a little bit of extra you know feel free to, to add a bit more dirt and grime here and there you don't have to just stay um, in the areas of where you've actually applied it initially just pay attention to your reference photos and also common sense of where you think the, the, the um, dirt and grime is going to accumulate. This is a rather simple process this part but uh, I don't know it's just very effective Make, makes everything stand out and again it gives that uh, the definition to, to the dark shadow areas just trying to add a little bit more streaking there once you've done your streaks leave well alone uh, the more you play with them the worse they'll look And you can see there's a lovely bit of definition there between the light and the dark very effective really pleased with how that was looking and remember this is the sepia uh, or warm sepia which is, is like a very um, dark could even, even say black brown And 
there we have it that's that stage complete so again leave well alone or uh, put the hair dryer on it and what we're going to do is the final stage what we want to do now is just to try and extenuate those edges um, and what I've done now is that I've loaded the uh, brush up uh, with some uh, dark green and I'm not actually dry brushing but it's, it's creating a, a similar look where well, I'm just using the um, edge of the uh, brush and just burnishing those those edges just to bring back a little bit of, uh, of the colour where needed And there we go, one finished storage bin. So with the storage bin finished, um, I'm just going to show you now the similar techniques that we used on the uh, lower hull around the um, turret bin. Um, now the reason I picked this area because, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, it's so difficult to do do, do our hobby properly in, in front of a camera. Um, so if I did make any mistakes, um, it's, it's not a major biggie because most of this is going to be covered up. But again, it's just uh, an opportunity for you to show you the techniques that I use and the results that I can get. So whereas with the turret, we went from dark to light. Here we're going to be going from light to dark. So using that mixture um, of all those light colours, um, which are very much the Abtalung buff and dust and light mud um, etc I'm just putting a bit of a, a dust layer around the um, turret ring itself and also uh, along the uh, edges and any other crevices on this particular part of the build and again using that blending brush blending it all out and taking any excess oil off you really do not want to flood the surface with either thinner or with oils you may have noticed that uh, I'm working on a turntable um, this therefore allows uh, less handling and also I've got my gloves on as well to avoid any uh, fingerprints in the oils so I decided to do um, not only blending but also a bit of stipple action and just uh, blend that right out so you have a little bit of light around dark dust work there don't have to be aggressive with your blending just let the brush do the work especially if you're working around um, delicate areas um, like handles and uh, straps etc because you don't want all your good work to be uh, pulled off by by your brush work if you remember right Lee, um, in the last video I actually laid down uh, just a general uh, layer of dust over the whole of the lower hull and I just wanted to use that as, as uh, uh, an initial layer um, and as you can see now I'm adding on another layer um, it just gives that extra bit of depth and um, interest and if you're mixing two or three dust colours up then you're obviously adding to the interest again as I keep saying, it's all about the layering process. 
adding on different layers of color. Now we're going to do some speckling. Again, it's just to thin down oils. Different brushes will create different uh, speckling patterns. Uh, similarly, different thicknesses of the oil uh, will do the same. So always practice before you add it onto the actual uh, tank itself. But there'll always be areas that you're not happy with and you can always blend those out. So that's that done. Now what we're going to do is to uh, add on some of the uh, darker colours. You'll have noticed I've changed brushes as well now. So one brush for light, one brush for dark. Blending brushes stayed the same. But again, always offload your um, blending brushes because you need to keep those as clean as you possibly can. There's no need to be putting any thin on the blending brushes unless you, you're in a bit of a pickle and you need to, to take off um, some of the uh, oil. But I'll warn you now, you start putting thinner on the tank at this particular stage, you're going to end up with one big gloop of oils. So keep everything dry and make sure the uh, only thinner that you're using is when you're mixing up the uh, oils on the palette. So what I'm doing now is that I'm going a thinner to the um, dust layer. If you remember the dust layer was um, uh, a few millimeters thick and blended out. Here I'm, I'm just keeping the dark as close to the um, rim as I possibly can. And then just adding dark spots uh, here and there on the rest of the uh, top of the hull. Again, this uh, dark colour is, is the mixture of the um, burnt umber, raw umber and the Valkyrie brown. And there you see nice stippling effect, blending it out. Yes, I know it's on the turntable and I should be turning it, but with the camera in the way, I had to manhandle it all, so uh, that's the reason for that. <clears throat> I do enjoy this uh, stage of, of modelling, uh, doing all the oil work, uh, but my attention span isn't that great, so uh, after doing it for an hour, an hour and a half, that, that's more than enough for me and then, and then I'll look forward to coming back to it uh, the following day and repeating the process. Starting to do a little bit of dark work around the um, fuel caps and uh, we'll do some uh, little bit of fuel spillage later on with the oils. I know some of you like to use um, the uh, pre-made enamel um, fuel um, that you can get pre-made in you know people like MIG and all that sort of thing but uh, you can create uh, just as good effects uh, with, with, with the different types of oils especially people like Abtalung they're, they're starting to bring out um, things like engine grease now as an oil you can either get metallics now and get copper, silver in oil. And as you can see, blend. Uh, uh, not only am I blending it on on the um, newer part, but I'm also blending it back into the areas that have already been done. So we're going to add some dark speckles this time. Again, no need to go too overboard on this. There we go, that's enough. Now what I'm doing here is that I've actually decided to pick out a, a one particular colour, um, which in this case was the raw umber, which, which is sort of like a, the, the, the dirt tone. 
and I'm just going over again just to add another bit of layer and interest also mixed in um, a, a little bit of earth as well and some of those dots I weren't too happy with so I've just blended it out again it's just to really show the techniques this is all going to be covered up with the um, the turret when it goes on if some of this was going to be on show there may be an argument to, to put a few little bit of pigments here and there as well but um, I was happy with uh, just using the oils Again, apologies for the uh, camera work. I just let it let it roll and adjusted it as and when I realised I was out of shot. But hopefully now you can see the benefit of uh, the layering process. We're doing a bit of streaks there, blending it into the uh, into the centre. And we've got some nice tonal work coming on there. it really is a simple process one that I certainly enjoy doing and one that I'm continually trying to improve as well because as I'm sure you can see from from the video I'm not the tidiest of uh, painters uh, I'm no artist I've just picked pick things up over the years um, and it's certainly one of my goals to try and get a little bit neater and tidier and try and get a little bit more precise but as with all things that will come with, uh, with with time and practice every build that I do I try something different hear about a new technique try and incorporate it see if it works if it doesn't fine if it does then add that to the um, portfolio of skills and take that forward to the next build we are always learning on this uh, hobby of ours and that's the great thing uh, with watching YouTube is you can pick up on other people's um, ideas and techniques as well and incorporate them in, into your way but what I always say is try and create your own look uh, it's all well and good copying other people I've done it myself you need to to, to to learn and practice the skills but eventually what you need to do is to try and create your own look so that when people do uh, see a build then they know it's done by yourself because of uh, your signature work so with that done we're now going to try and add a little bit of the uh, grease so we're going to do some uh, detail again with the uh, black sepia and we're doing a few little fuel dots there and again around on the other fuel cap and again you'll notice that I've now moved down to the uh, smaller brush again I have a little bit of an overspill onto the uh, top of the uh, exhaust guard there So with that done, we'll now get the blender and we'll just very carefully blend that out because this is going to be the uh, bottom um, fuel layer and then what we do once this is dried, we'll come in and, and add a slightly darker layer on top within the boundaries of the this particular layer. So very careful and considered blending when doing this. There we go, so we'll wait for that to dry out. And now I'm coming in with a, a slightly darker colour. I'm going to be a little bit more precise.
and you'll notice this time I'm not blending it out that will stay as it is and that will dry out nicely so going back to the uh, dark sepia we're going to make that uh, ink like substance and now what we're going to do is go around all the grooves and the rivets etc and make those areas pop again apologies for the camera Now when I'm doing this, you obviously can't see it, but I'm actually holding my wrist uh, with my other hand. Uh, that arm is then supported against the uh, table. So it's very important when you're doing this fine bit of detailing that your hand is as steady as it possibly can be. But even now, if you look at the area that I've done, how much better it now looks sort of um i don't know, like, like like putting a frame on the picture it, it just sets it off really nicely I'm not going to blend it all out but there are obviously a few little bits that uh, straight out of the lines it also gives you an opportunity to possibly put as I'm doing now doing some streaking work um, but again always offload because the oils are a little bit wetter when we do this bit of the process and blend it out as best as you possibly can and again blend it in with the areas that you've already done previously so it all looks like one solid piece of work I was really pleased with how this bit came out because I don't know if you remember it was quite a lot of work to uh, get those joints covered up get the weld uh, put in place um, and now that it's all painted up it just looks like it uh, there was no issues at all so really pleased with how that turned out and just as a reminder the um, brushes that I'm using are round number twos for blending and for application that's pretty much it um, I like to leave it as is and then come back to it the next day and if there's any further work to be done or blending in then I'll do it but uh, hope that's been of help so let's have a look at some of the stowage um, again very similar processes uh, whereby um, 
we're going to be building up layers of weathering uh, but here uh, this is just the acrylic work uh, initially with the blacks and the uh, good different types of greens um, the actual um, decals um, on the side of the um, ammo and grenade um, boxes um, aren't strictly correct um, basically it's just stuff that I found in the uh, spares but uh, from a distance you can't really tell um, but it is a nice bit of detailing now the great thing about uh, doing the um, extras off of the uh, vehicles you do tend to get different shades different contrasts of colors etc um, and for me that, that that just adds character to, to the build I'm not a great one for having it, it all looking the same uh, shade and color so there we have it um, I hope you didn't mind me doing this slightly elongated um, version of the video showing you uh, how I do do the oil work um, but uh, all together I was really pleased uh, with how the uh, final look uh, has come out lots of contrast lots of different shades lots of layering um, and I'm really pleased um, with the final result so just like to say thank you for sticking with me on, on this particular uh, build um, it's been a very enjoyable one um, I'd like to thank all of my uh, subscribers uh, for your continued support um, and I thank you for all the uh, comments um, that you uh, put um, underneath the video so it just leaves me to say many thanks and happy modeling <laughs>